want you to check yourself and see if you figured it out. So you want us to come up with? That's not it. Oh, I'm not done. Yeah. Haha. Uh -huh. Oh, and this already, right? Go ahead. I just said a point. <laughs> The bisector of the vertex, and here's your vertex angle, is perpendicular to the base, all right, so it creates 90 degree angles, and it's at the midpoint, which means it took the base and cut it into two equal halves. Well, what have we created? Two congruent triangles. We have created two congruent triangles because this is also equal to itself. So, so ancient writing. Okay. So that's what it's saying. Now, from all of this information, we're going to look at the uh, classroom exercises. All right. So turn to page one hundred and thirty-six in your book. On page 136, the classroom exercises, look at number one. The picture to the right is what we're dealing with. But in number one, we're only asked about triangle AOD. So I would suggest that you just draw triangle AOD. All right, and now let's indicate what they've told us. It says that in this triangle, it is isosceles, which means there are two sides that are equal. Then it tells us which two. It says that OA is congruent to OD. And the question is, if that is true, then which two angles are congruent? Angle A and angle D. Because those are the angles opposite the sides. Okay? Now in number two, it says, okay, now let's look at triangle BOC. So what I would do is only draw BOC. It says BOC is also isosceles and OB is congruent to OC. So which two angles must be congruent? Okay, but here's the problem with simply saying angle B and angle C. Although I drew only this triangle on my paper to help me see more clearly, in the book, the picture includes two more points, right? So I can't just say angle C and angle B because there are two possible angle B's and two possible angle C's. So I have to name them correctly. So it would be angle O, B, C, and angle O, C, B. Does everyone understand why I have to name those that way? But why I could simply say angle A and D, because that's the only angle A and the only angle D drawn in the picture. Okay. So the vertex does it matter when we're going to do a triangle? Because like you know, on an angle, like the vertex has to be in the middle. Uh, oh, when you're drawing, when you're labeling a triangle, yeah. no, whatever order you want to put it in, just start with one and go clockwise. Okay. But you would count. No, you didn't count. That's what I'm labeling. I'm doing angles. Okay. All right. Number three says triangle AOD is an isosceles, that means it has two equal sides, right, so it also has one right angle, triangle. And the right angle is AOD. So vertex is at O. It's isosceles, which means that it has two equal sides and two equal angles. 
Now let's think about this. It's a right triangle. Two angles have to be equal. Can there be another right angle? No, you can't have more than one right angle in a triangle. So these two must be equal to each other, right? Those are your base angles. You have an isosceles triangle, your base angles are equal. Question was, what's the measure of angle A? 45. Because all three must add up to 180, and these two must combine to make 90 degrees. When you split it in half, they're each 45. So angle, angle A had a measure of 45 degrees. Very good. All right, now number four. I want to point something out very quickly. Number four, you are given two triangles. The first triangle is isosceles. It has two legs that are eight and eight. The second triangle is isosceles. It has two legs that are eight and eight. But that is all we know. Do we know necessarily that the two different triangles are congruent to each other? No. And I want to point something out to you real quick. Suppose I tell you that this line is eight units long. Okay? units long. And that's all I know. Now we know that all of those lines are eight units long, eight units long right? I'm trying to show you. The picture in the book makes it look like they're exactly the same. But remember, we cannot assume anything. All we know is that this is eight and this is eight. That this is eight and this is eight. This triangle could be super fat. Like that, still eight and eight. And this triangle could look like that, still eight and eight. That's all we know, okay? So I don't want you to think, well, it looks the same, so yes, they must be congruent. All right, now let's answer the questions. It says, given the triangles at the right, which of the following can we conclude are true? All right, it says, in triangle, uh, here we go, A. That angle D is congruent to angle R. No. Those are angles into different triangles that we don't know to be congruent. So no, we cannot prove that. That DE is congruent to DF. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Same triangle, both eight. That DF is congruent to RT. Yes, they're different triangles, but they're both eight. That angle E is congruent to angle F? No. Yes, yes. yes, they're in the same triangle. We know it's isosceles, and we know that those are the base angles. That angle E is congruent to angle S? No. No. Angle measures, different triangles, we don't know. How about S and T? Yes. Yes. Okay. Base angles of an isosceles triangle. Very good. All right, if you look at the next picture. 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 All right. You've got to identify which triangles are being formed by the two angles before you can tell which sides are congruent. All right, so this is what we're looking at. 